Any updates with uh, Kyler? Yeah, he'll be out there today. He's feeling better. He'll be ready to go. Um, the one news I'll let you guys know, uh, Hollywood we're going to put on IR. Um, just hasn't been able to kind of overcome what he's got going on. So it's best thing for him, best thing for us. So we're going to put him on IR. Um, everyone else should be good to go here. Is there a pretty good chance Lecky will be activated? or? Uh, we're, no, we're probably not going to activate him this week. Okay. Yeah, so we'll then we'll see um, going into Seattle there. Bobby Price still kind of seeing how today goes. So. When it comes to taking away the other team's best player, is, yeah. is Trey McBride getting some of that treatment right now, especially in passing? Situations? Yeah, I think people are aware of him. You know what I mean? But as we talked before, you know, without completely restructuring everything to take away the tight ends, that's why those are good positions, good players to have that can make plays in the passing game. Um, you know, it's it's you you got to devote assets to him but it you without completely restructuring your defense it's kind of hard so yeah but you see people doing some different things to him you know i call it butching or jamming them at the line of scrimmage you know then add into the rush or putting you know a safety on him instead of a linebacker um middle field safety is a little more aware of him you know than than some other things so yeah people are aware of him he's made a lot of plays for us he's one of our you know premier players in the passing game he's had a ton of production uh, he's playing at a high level, so um, good defenses are going to account for that. What kind of lesson is that for a young guy? He kind of starts to blossom as a star. If you will. Yeah, you got to. I think with Trey, um, the lesson is is people are going to adjust how they play you, and you got to be able to adjust your game and overcome that. You know what I mean? And still produce at a high level. But I say this all the time. You guys know this, and it's it's really not coach speak. Like what I just said, how people are accounting for him. So he's in, he's affecting the game in a positive way, even though he might not show up on the stat sheet like you know certain games he has. You know what I mean? So um, you know other guys might have a one on one where they're not getting a one on one, or the coverage structures might say, "Hey, this is an open area," because they're trying to do something a little different to account for him. So um, good players affect the game no matter their stats or not. You know, I really believe that. That's on defense too. You know what I mean? Um, they all work together and people take some stress, but then there's some strength that goes to other places. So it's the ultimate team game. With, with Hollywood, how much discussion, if any, was there with him as this decision was being made? Every day. Every day with him. Yeah, I mean, we always talk to the players first, you know what I mean? And, and make sure that the players know, the guys in that locker room know that we have their best interest at heart. Um, and if they show us that their team first, which he has all year, um, we will always do what's best for the player first and then the team. So um, he's been awesome with that. He's communicated extremely well. And he tried, man. I, I love him for it. I mean, he's, he's really, last better part of a month here has been kind of grinding through an injury. Um, you know, he's a Ferrari out there and you're putting unleaded in him, you know, he needs premium. So that's kind of the analogy I use with him when I talk to him, you know, but he's got a, he's got a foot issue, you know, so, and he just, he's, he's tried, you know, it's not for that lack of, he's in there, you know, I mean, to the wee hours up here earlier than a lot of people get in here, getting treatment, doing things like that. He wants to play. He's just, he just can't go. Is he in a situation where... He just needs a lot of rest, or might he need to have Yeah, I, no, no, I think it's just that. He needs a couple weeks off here, you know what I mean? And that's what's been happening. Like, we kind of give him all, you know, you guys know. Um, so I think he'll be back in, I mean, he'll be healthier than ever and be a better player moving into next year. What, what is it about the push play, whatever we want to call it, that mm -hmm. makes the Eagles so effective at it? Uh, the detail that they coach it with, the players that they have um, doing it, and um, the execution of it, truthfully. I mean, it's, you know, they, they're, they're detailed out on it. They have a couple different wrinkles from it, too, that if you want to try to sell out to stop that, you're going to get burned. So you got to be careful with that, too, because you don't want a fourth and one play or a third and one play to get, you know, go for 30, which they've done to teams. So, um, you know, you got to kind of pick and choose your spots there, but something that they do extremely well. You coached you coached Reed Blankenship last year, and mm -hmm. last year he was a good training camp story, and now he's now he leads the Eagles in tackles. 
what has what have you seen from him, and how do you think he's grown as the <coughs> years gone? By? Yeah, I mean, uh, you guys know the safety position to me is he's got those traits to ascend, which he has. You know, he's reliable, and he he has a very his brain um, processes and thinks very quickly. Um, he's a big guy. I say he's a big guy that plays big. Um, he's, he has length to tackle the ball in space. He's big in the core. You know, he can tack you, tackle you multiple ways. And he's fast. He's got range in the back end. He can cover. He was, he was, he was, he's a good player. How does the defense back to that play? Is it tough to prepare for that? going against it and how I guess you can't spend too much time on it because there's so much other stuff yeah. you have to do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you have to prepare for it though, you know, because it comes up in multiple spots during the game for them. Um, yeah, there's technique involved and uh, there's a little bit of will involved, you know what I mean? But it's a it's definitely a tough play to stop. How important are these final two games for Kyler heading into the twenty twenty four season? I wouldn't say the next two games. I would say this game is important for Kyler. You know what I mean? He wants to play well. We got to operate on the road um, versus a good defense on a, against a really good team uh, who's fighting to be the one seed. We know the challenge that lies ahead, and um, it's important for him and for us that he plays winning football. Even though there's two games left in the season, do you feel like you've grown into this job at all over the last couple of months? I don't know. I know that I've made mistakes and I've learned. You know what I mean? So. Um, with all, f you know, aspects of, of sitting in the chair that I'm sitting in right now. So that's been cool as a learning experience. You know what I mean? You got to get better. Everyone's got to get better. Uh, that's our job. Um, but um, it's a good building to be in, and I get a lot of help and uh, look forward to, you know, learning this week too. You know what I mean? But honestly, right now, I'm worried about 10, 15, walk through, and then practice. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm all in on Friday. That, Get the music turned up. Sorry. Off of that, how would you say your two coordinators kind of evolved over from start to, to well, I would say all three. You know, Jeff's obviously done it for a long time. He's been a huge resource for me. Um, really good football coach, and it shows that unit plays extremely well for us. Um, I think Nick and Drew have done a really good job of adapting throughout the year. Um, you know, putting together good plans, uh, being positive, coaching our guys, making sure they're improving. Um, you know, they've, they've, I kind of knew that going in, but you never know how someone's going to react in the seat that they're in the first time, myself included. Um, but uh, they're both emotionally stable, smart guys, high character, high capacity, and uh, they relate to the players. They tell them why. Um, they're detailed out, and uh, they coach up their guys. So I'm, I'm extremely pleased with them too. With, with all that Kyler's had to experience this year and just trying to get back in a rhythm and flow, how much do you think it affects the one pack on this week and having not, not having two days of practice? Yeah, a little bit, but he's played a lot of ball. You know what I mean? He was out there yesterday and got all the mental reps. He's, he's probably met more this week than any other week, just getting you know up to speed and things. But um, yeah, he'll, like I said, he'll be out there today and he'll go let it rip. You know what I mean? But he's he's I'm, I'm less concerned with if he was a rookie. You know what I mean? That's that's real. But um, so, but he understands what he's got to do to to give us a chance to win. When you have a third quarterback up, just in case he doesn't feel. We'll see. Make that decision here shortly.